In this video, we are going to learn about how to convert a program written using iteration into a recursive function. Now, a very big disclaimer. Uh, the following steps that you see on the screen are not vetted by any book. These are some of the observations that I came up with uh, while identifying the steps that are required or needed to convert a program written using iteration into recursion. Right? So uh, it might work for some programs, it may not work for others. Right? So uh, learn this algorithm or and identify the steps with a pinch of salt. All right? So in step one, our first task is to identify the variables which have been declared before the loop as well as the loop variable. And after we have identified these variables in our iterative function, we can add these variables to our parameter list of the recursive function. So let's understand what I mean uh, with, by this step. So here, I have a program uh, which calculates the factorial of a number which has been written using the iterative approach. Now, to convert the same function into a recursive function, there are a few things that we, that we have to copy first. So as you can already notice that the function returns an integer. Therefore, a recursive function would also return an integer because factorial of a number is an integer. Next, uh, the name of the function can be different. I'm putting a different, a different name, let's say rec fact. And then we need to identify the variables that have been declared before the loop as well as the loop variable. So if you observe closely, uh, num, fact, and i are the three variables which fall into those two categories. Num and fact are the variables that have been declared before the, fun uh, before the loop and i is our loop variable. Therefore, we add them to the parameter list. So in num, in, uh, in fact, in i. The order does not matter. All right? Okay. Now, moving on to the second step. Now, in the second step, we need to identify the base condition. And to identify the base condition, we need to figure out what our test condition is in the loop and we need to invert that test condition. So, uh, inside of our loop, we, the, our test condition is this, i greater than equals to. Now, we need to invert this condition, meaning we need to do this, i greater than equal to 1. Now, this is not uh, very pleasing to the eye. So, if you observe a little carefully, you will see that i less than 1 is the inverted condition for i greater than equal to 1. Now, there is no clear way of explaining why that is the opposite. You, uh, some of you, when I have asked my students, I found out that uh, the opposite of greater than equal to was met with an answer less than equal. But actually, it's less than because equal to condition has already been taken up through this operator, greater than or equal to. And the only option that's left is less than. Therefore, i less than 1 is our base condition. Right? Now, in say case of a recursive function, you would already know that a recursive function consists of two parts, the base case and the recursive case. And the ba base case is written first. All right? Now, in step three, it states that everything inside the loop along with the update expression forms the part of the recursive case, whereas everything after the loop forms our base case. Now, because we need to write our base case first, let's see uh, that return fact is forms the base case, whereas, uh, let me use a different color, whereas this and this, the body of the loop and the update expression forms the recursive case, right? Okay. So let's write that down in our recursive function. So if followed by the base condition, and the base condition is i less than 1. And there, what we do, we are returning the factorial because it has already been calculated. Return fact. Now we are moving on to our recursive case. Recursive case. 
else what do we do we first write the body of the loop fact equal to fact times i and then we write the update expression and because i don't have much space over here if I'm going to write it side by side, you do not need to write this side by side. You can very well write it one after the other if you have space in your copy. I minus minus. Now that we have already written the body of the loop and the update expression in our recursive function, now is the time for a function call. As you know, that recursion is a recursive function is such which calls itself as a part of its execution. Therefore, we need to call this function again. So we would call rec fact and pass it to all the variables num fact and i. All right. Moreover, because this function uh, returns, therefore you need uh, okay. <laughs> you just need to add one keyword in front of it that's return because this function returns all right and then you close the else and the function and there you go we have our recursive function now uh, some of you might be asking how should we call this function to start the process of the calculation of the factorial of a number now to do that we have step number four so step four tells you that the initialization values of the variables are passed during a function call. So if you uh, observe that only fact and i are being initialized, whereas num is any number whose factorial we want to calculate. So in case of function call, let's say we want to find the factorial of the number five. So we are going to call the function as follows. The name of our function or recursive function is rec fact and uh, first we have the number so we're going to pass it the number and then we have the fa uh, fact and then i so if you notice that we are initializing fact with one in the iterative function so that's what i'm going to pass as the starting value of fact and we are initializing i with num so that's what i'm going to write as the starting value of i and that's it and this will constitute the function call of a recursive function. And uh, about the disclaimer that I uh, talked about before beginning on with, uh, before starting on with the algorithm. So uh, the following algorithm is not foolproof. Some pro you may be able to convert a few programs with these and some of the programs you might not be able to convert following this approach, right? But uh, what I have seen is that in uh, ISC, uh, most of the programs can be converted using this, the following technique. Moreover, the following technique can only be used if your iterative program contains no nested loops. So for non-nested loops, the following approach would work and for nested loops, the following approach would not work. All right. So that's it. That's about the algorithm to convert. Uh, now, from next video onwards, we're going to have a few programs where we will see we'll take an uh, example of a few questions and we're going to convert the iterative function to a recursive function. All right. So, we're going to understand the process of conversion. I'm not going to dive much into the algorithm of how to solve the problem, rather, I'm going to focus on how to convert uh, the iterative function to a recursive one. All right. So, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.